Howdy, gals and uh, gents. I'm in Kitchen, Ontario. Got here in my Mustang via Highway 7. And today is Monday. And what is that? What I've been doing? First, a uh, friend of mine is he wants to get into heavy haul and he's buying. He wants to buy a double drop and he has a regular three axle truck. Uh, when I say three axle, I mean total of three axles, right? Just a regular highway tractor. And it's pretty old. It's like 2006 Volvo with uh, over a million miles on it. So he doesn't want to do heavy. He cannot do heavy. He does not have a pusher axle. And so my advice to him was to get like a 40 ton or 45 ton if he can find it. But uh, nobody makes, hardly anyone makes 45 ton uh, double drops. And so he wanted to go with a 35 ton extendable and he found one that operates with air uh, BWS right but the price was like ridiculous you know and then he went to I gave him my uh, I gave him contact info my for my um, local Fontaine dealer he called that one and again the price he didn't like the price is just too much money for an extendable you know and this is his first time uh until now he only dealt with step deck and flatbeds so he now he just wants to go with a 40 ton fontaine double drop with a flip axle so two axles plus one flip so like a long well 29 foot well you know that would work i think that would work okay for him except that he wants to go mechanical and he wants to have platforms everywhere like in the front in the middle in the back and I tell him it's a bad idea and I say you gotta pay a bit extra and get uh, hydraulic instead of mechanical and if somebody new to this the big advantage is that it like if I'm coming in my truck to like a, a railroad crossing and I see and you know now like my eye is already trained for this like I never used to notice them when I pulled the flatbed or step deck but with this type of trailer especially when I have to put it Pretty much in the lowest setting like the front under the ramps that's my worst uh, concern always uh, it's like this much you know if I use uh, position two out of five I have maybe two inches from the ground so that's fine on the freeway but when I try to enter a truck stop and usually there's like hills like this right or I see a railroad crossing I can change the height of the trailer in like 30 seconds you know all I do is just park on the side put on this on the shoulder put my flashing lights on start my PTO right very fast much faster than a regular uh, than a Honda motor especially in winter uh, you just keep the motor running just push the clutch in push the button you see the letters PTO and then just switch on the cruise control increase your RPM to about 800 RPM that just takes like I don't know 15 seconds and then jump out of the cab and use the levers on the gooseneck raise it you know uh, unlock it raise it more done you know and then once i over that railroad crossing i do the same procedure in reverse and i lower the trailer back to the you know to the traveling position so to speak the one i use on uh, uh, on the freeway but and also another disadvantage of these uh, so yeah railroad crossings and all kind of uneven roads um, so if you have a mechanical trailer what and you come to a crossing like that what do you do you have to back you know because you'll get stuck you have to back and you have to turn around and especially if there's vehicles behind you just you know pain in the butt um, and another big disadvantage of mechanical uh, trailers is that it takes much longer to unhook and rehook you know hydraulics I don't know unhooking takes maybe two minutes you know rehooking takes okay sometimes I have to try you know to hit the proper spot some sometimes it can take 10 minutes but mostly can take five minutes you know but mechanical I don't know and they say yeah it's all hydraulics you know you can have a leak you know I don't want to get stuck somewhere in the in the boonies in winter with the hydraulic leak like what hydraulic leak you know I keep saying that if there was no hydraulics all our construction machinery will be dead you know like excavators dozers wheel loaders 
uh, even rollers like everything in construction works on hydraulics you know and it works fine it's not like it's the beginning of 20th century where they only started using this technology it's been around for you know I don't know 100 years now so it's very reliable you know everybody uses hydraulics like NASA you know uh, astronauts use hydraulics you know otherwise they'd be dead you know so nothing's wrong with hydraulics don't so don't guys be so afraid of hydraulics and that's why I told this guy I said I would never buy mechanical you know just if you want to save money just you know uh, you will lose probably one platform because I only know one manufacturer like Kaufman now they they make what's uh, known what they call as a commercial instead of construction it's commercial series and it's still hydraulic but they put uh, uh, a deck on the front if you want in the middle of course in the back so you got three decks kind of like a regular double drop but it's still hydraulic you know and I think that's a good deal if you you know if you're okay with the brand you know uh, but even if you lose the front deck because I think Fontaine you cannot get a deck in the in the front on the gooseneck if you uh, if you get a hydraulic trailer but even if you lose one deck I don't think it's such a big deal you still have two you know and most of the time you only use the the main one at least that's my my experience um, and that's what I told this guy and so after that what I've been dealing with is uh, I had a very bad experience until now with uh, cross-border banking that's when you open uh, when you're a Canadian resident and Canadians that travel a lot in the States they know what I'm talking about so you can go to your bank in Canada and they will help you open a bank account with their partner in US right and this way uh, you can transfer your money from Canada to US you can use uh, you get a, like a US debit card so you can use it for purchases in the States uh, and it sounds like a great idea in theory except that these idiots they use voice recognition when you call them and you want to transfer money let's say from your US bank to partner to your uh, Canadian bank they use voice recognition to identify you there's no usernames there's no passwords you cannot do it yourself you have to call in and honestly in like 20 years I've been in Canada I never had a bank when I dial and there's a busy tone you know the only time you hear that it's either when you call an individual or you call a government during tax season sometimes you call a tax office and per per you know like very annoying but this bank I'm dealing with in the States uh, quite a few times I had this it's either that or it's like busy line or they say oh we have you know too many calls like the wait time can be 45 minutes or longer <laughs> and then they cannot identify me they lock me out or you'll have to go to the to your branch in Canada to verify your identity so so I had this account uh, I opened it when before I just before I started tracking under my own uh, colors so to speak in uh, I think it was uh, September 2017 I opened this account so from September 2017 till February 2018 I tried four or five times to transfer money from US to Canada and each time they would lock me out the voice software would not recognize my voice you know and all you gotta do is just go to your branch and use the US card take out cash in Canadian money and then put it right back into the the same ATM but only now you're putting into your Canadian account it's like ridiculous and so now I realize that my bank uh, offers you know US dollar account in Canada and that's again sounds like a great plan in uh, in theory right you go you open a US dollar account so now people can pay you in US dollars and you can use this account when you're in the States right let's say so I said okay let's say I'm in the States and I want to buy a bottle of vodka I said first of all are you gonna give me a separate uh, debit card for this account the guy says in Canada the guy says ah no it goes on your regular um, Canadian you know debit card debit card that I have my ATM card so now I have only two Canadian accounts there so now they will add the US dollar account and I said okay so how do I use this to make purchases in US with this new US dollar Canada based account and the guy says ah uh, you can't <laughs> I said you're kidding me right he says ah uh, no the banking system is so different is that 
you would need to transfer money to your Canadian account, your checking account, and then you can use that one. But I said, wait, but then what's the point of having a US dollar account if I have to transfer to Canadian money and then I use that guy to, uh, to use that uh, account where I only have now Canadian funds, right? And now I buy, let's say, the bottle of vodka and I'm in US and it, let's, uh, let's say it's, uh, I don't know, $5 US. So now these guys are, are going to charge me conversion rate you know, first from US to, to Canadian when I, when I have to move the money, right? And now because I'm paying with Canadian dollars for US, I'm paying US price, they're gonna hit me again. You know? And I, I told the guy, I said, there's no escaping you guys, you know, you get us every time, you know? Like, either that one is, that one is not working and this one is not working. And then he says, okay, he says, the only solution is if you wanna use this account, uh, like this new account for purchasing in, in US, is to get a US dollar visa credit card. <laughs> and he says, this way, visa is fine. He says, visa uh, credit issued in Canada works in US, no problem. But US dollar account does not work, you know? And so he says, I said, okay, I don't wanna get another credit card right now, but he says, that's what they can do later on is just give me a, another visa but this one is US dollars and what's good about this deal is that there's no conversion right let's say I use it in the States for to buy the same bottle of vodka or maybe now I buy a bottle of brandy since I have a visa you know and and now my debt is in US dollars and now I just take US dollars from my new account and I transfer it here so there's no conversion in between like Canadian US US to Canadian so that's the only way and I'm only recording this for, you know, for guys that uh, often travel in the States from Canada. This probably will be of no interest to U.S. viewers, except kind of like fun entertainment. How difficult sometimes it can be, you know, to when you're based in Canada and you have to be able to, uh, you know, buy stuff in the States and receive payments uh, in U.S. dollars. You know, it's not easy. So many options and none of them is perfect. Okay, and the last thing I wanted to show you guys is that now I'm in this fitness depot exercise equipment superstore. So I drove 20 kilometers, 15 miles to get here from Guelph. So this is Kitchener. And see, we still have snow, but now everything is melting because it's like minus 2, 29F, almost summer by Canadian standards. And I posted the link on my Facebook page about, you know, I was looking for some kind of a mi minimalistic approach to strength training and I started doing, you know, exercises with my own weight, but it's just, it's fine. I came up with like 10 exercises. I pretty much can target all major muscles, but something like biceps, you know, triceps, it's hard to do when you don't have any equipment at all. And I don't want to buy kettlebells again because I remember I had very difficult time with them in, in the truck because first of all those round ones they keep rolling around no matter how you put them on the floor and of course I was putting them with the handle down and they would leave a very big indentation in the rubber floor you know and plus they're fixed weight you know you outgrow them very fast so you need to have like 10 of them you know I don't know 16 kilos 24 32 you know, and that's in pounds, that's uh, 35, uh, 50, and I think 80. Yeah, so, you know, to, to do like a full range training, you need a bunch of them. And then, then I thought about these um, dumbbells where you can change the weight, adjustable dumbbells, but they're pretty expensive. And again, the, the, the upper limit is only like 50 pounds. You know, so it's basically it's like 16 and 24 kilos, but for some exercises later on, you, you'll definitely want something uh, heavier. And then, by accident, I ran into, uh, you know, when I was watching some of these videos, I saw a suggestion, like a suggested video. And it was from a bunch of guys somewhere in the States, and they were saying, you know, the guy did this video as a response to a question from a viewer who was asking about how to bring down the cost, you know, of equipment because it, this stuff can be very expensive. And so they did a specific video where they were showing exercises you can do with a single 45 pound barbell plate, 
you know and it's like a great video the guy had uh, six or seven exercises you know pretty cool and I, I, I and you know it it only works with a plate that has holes in it so we can put your hands in you know so you can hold it easy and I know these guys sell them and they're not expensive and so I thought you know 45 pounds would be great to start with and then I can add another one and there's uh, very lots of flexibility with this program you know you just use one plate you can do biceps triceps you know uh, back you can do like uh, swings and jerks with it you know it's a cool video I put a link on my Facebook page uh, but it's uh, I think it's only friends only uh, post and so that's what I want to get and also it's a plate so it's it's not gonna move right it's not gonna leave indents in the floor you know so let's let's go do some uh, strength fitness equipment shopping look at this okay yeah so these are small ones see we have some bars in there all kinds of stuff oh and i need to buy some um well, there's some mats in here see all kinds of good stuff no I, wow i don't need something like this but i don't have my gloves anymore no these are too small Get it, we'll buy it next. Oh no, they're, they're pretty large. Large ten dollars. Ten dollars. Do you have them by sizes here, the gloves? Do you have like... Uh, the very, so they're typically, when any style, there's a uh, small, or small, medium, large, extra large. Yeah, I just want large. Like, where is, I want this, like, large, $9. That would be... Because these, I tried these, they're very small. This is large in that style, so I have an extra large here. Extra large is this? That one, yep. You can take it out and try it. Can I? Okay. Yeah. Cool, thank you. This is large. <laughs> no, that's not gonna work. Yeah, that's the issue sometimes, you know, you gotta, you have to try them on. They don't work. Okay, we're trying extra large. I need to buy this because I broke the package. Well, this should be okay. All right, I cannot even. I cannot even try them on. Okay? Yeah. Well, I couldn't. I couldn't open the. I didn't want to break them, okay. but I'll t I'll take them. I'll okay. take them. All right. Now the plates. Oh, look at this. Lots of bikes. Wow, they have real barbells over there. Oh, this is cool. Oh, this you can do some. You can do some boxing with this. How are you doing, buddy? You okay? Okay. Oh, this is cool. You doing good? 
What did you say? What was that? All right. When do they come? Yeah, okay, these are the ones, yeah. The ones where you have the opening. And these are, wow. Oh, these are pretty good. 45. Okay, yeah, they have 45 and they have... So we have them like that in the iron, but then we have these. These are made out of rubber. So they might be better. And then we have 35. 35, but I know the guys in the movie, they use this one. Wow, it's pretty heavy. Maybe I'll buy two of these, huh? So I can do all this good stuff and then two of them that's 90 that's pretty cool yeah you don't need any you don't need any kettlebells like with these two I'll be able to do a lot of a lot of ex exercises okay here we have kettlebells Yeah, that's the kettlebells, but again, like I said, and I know these are, these are adjustable, but I really like the routine I saw, like these guys were doing, you know, in the, in the, in the video. Yeah, they have all kinds of adjustable, you know, like, look, $558. You know, just too much. All right, maybe I'll just buy one, you know. I think for me, I'm just starting. Like, well, two would be good for, for legs. No, it's okay, I'll buy two. No, I'm doing, I'm just sorry, I'm recording this. Okay. I'm doing a video for my YouTube channel. Yeah, it's fine, no problem. So I'll buy two of these. Uh, the 45s? Yeah, I guess they're cast iron. Yeah, or, cast iron, yeah. Or are they steel? Uh, cast iron. Okay, so two of these. Sounds good. And that's the biggest size they come in with, right? Uh, we do a 50, but that's the regular hole, so the one inch hole, you know? So is it the one that goes like on a regular barbell? Yeah, that one would go on an Olympic bar, so like... Uh, is this like an Olympic size? Olympic size, yeah. Okay. So the Olympic has the two inch end, the regular bar is going to have the one inch end. One inch you mean thickness? Uh, yeah, like the diameter of the bar. Okay. Okay, yeah, so I bought, I got... Two of those? Yeah, two okay. simple ones, not... The, uh, mm -hmm. uh, what's the difference between these and the rubber ones, rubberized it's ones? just the rubber coating on the other ones, yeah. No, They're but in cool. price. Uh, so those ones right there are 80 cents a pound, the rubber coated 88 cents a pound. Oh, wow. okay. So I'll get these ones. Those ones? Sure. Yeah. Um, so with the gloves. So. Have a good day. Yeah, you too. Bye. <laughs> wow. <laughs> now we're talking. So guys, get ready for some cool and exciting fitness, fitness videos on my channel check this out beautiful see now what what else you can do with them if you ever have a flat you can probably just I think it's the same hole you can just put it and use it instead of the wheel you know very flexible oh by the way see the the gloves feet work wow so that's 90 pounds in there all right so let me so I'll put them in here. Oh, beautiful. One will go in here. Now, I don't want them to scratch too bad. And I 
can do that in my truck you know and in the truck this area is much bigger so you see because those kettlebells they just keep rolling around this is beautiful all right And the price was, if anybody's interested, like one thing was 36 bucks Canadian, which is much cheaper than a kettlebell, you know? So 36 bucks Canadian, that's like, I don't know, 28, 27 US, you know? So basically that's the most affordable way if you can deal with uh, having just two weights, but that's it. But also I want to do you know why I think that now I'll be okay with this is because I'm also using my own weight you know I have a bunch of like I said 10 exercises where uh, I do body weight exercises and then I just use these as a kind of like supplementary and so now I think it'll be okay it's not and plus it'll give me a variety you know lots of exercises where with kettlebells I don't know I just that's not that much variety because here the see the grip is much wider right so you put your uh, hands in there so it's you cannot do that on a kettlebell you know so these are my new kettlebells so to speak so all right so i guess what you guys want to see some uh, driving on the ice snow streets well you probably saw that well i might just show you you know going through the lights a couple of times so you see this is kitchener and they just finished uh, this bunch of snow, but it snowed like two or three days ago. No, two days ago. So now it's everything is melting. Oh, by the way, one thing, one other funny thing happened this morning is I warmed up the car, I started driving, and I heard some noise from the tires. I go out and I forgot to look, and there's like ice frozen around the tires, and it's blocking, you know, the, the front tires were having a hard time turning because the ice was packed between the you know the the frame and the tire so i had to use my uh, trusted scraper like this other end and just hit the hit the ice till it broke down you know it took me like probably i don't know 15 minutes for all four wheels there's so much ice and i like these you know they're like padded very comfortable and they feel a bit tight but the guy shoot me they will they will expand a little bit they will stretch but you need these because the edges are a bit sharp in there but i'm really happy you know i did not see these i don't remember seeing these uh kind of plates before i thought they were all like solid disc you know back on highway 7 so this is frederick street in kitchen take the next right onto frederick street then turn right onto victoria street north turn right okay now look at this guy These guys have a red light and they're all stopping right in front of me. Take the next right onto Victoria Street North, Ontario 7. And after a quick rolling stop, they are off into the distance. It's as if I have a passenger that weighs 90 pounds. And who weighs 90 pounds? I don't think it's a grown-up. It's probably like a, like a kid, right? Like an overfed, fat kid that 
likes to play video games and eat ice cream by the bucket. But yeah, I see at least now the it's sunny. Temperature is minus five Celsius, which is uh, 32 minus two, 30 minus seven. Uh, what? 23 F? Yeah, probably. So 23 F minus five Celsius. It was blue sky in the morning, but now we have lots of clouds. I hope it's not gonna snow again. And actually I was here, this is the area where I go to do any work on my trailer, actually, because there's a Wabash trailers in here. Nice guys if, you know, if they're a bit expensive, but they do a very good job. And also, if you remember, this is where I was back when it was like in December, I bought that uh, snowplow oil, as they call it. There's a, that place is somewhere there on the left it's actually it's their own oil you know it's not like shell or something it's these guys make their own oil and i said that i need something for my hydraulic system and also uh, somebody left me a comment or a tip i don't read comments Get it ready install the pto install the fenders and so that's the plan now is just waiting waiting for the truck and keeping you guys busy with some youtube videos so hopefully you see now as my truck is closer to being released uh, you will see more trucking topics because you know I, I, I'll have a lot I already know my VIN number and actually I tried to upgrade my um, my cap card my plate like to transfer the plate from the Mac uh, to um, to the Kenworth but I, I emailed the IRP office here, you know, the one that deals with the international plates, because that's what I have, my plate is an international. And I said, could you send me a list of documents you need to transfer the plate to the new truck? And they said, oh, we need a copy of the purchase agreement. We need a uh, copy of your lease. And I don't have a lease yet, right? That lady is on vacation till uh, uh, February 20th. And so anyway, so that's on hold for now, but now that I know the VIN number, I know the VIN, the year, the make and model, so I can do some other things. And so, like I'm saying that now the vacation videos are pretty much over. So uh, get ready for more and more trucking content. And one 
particular topic will be um, I'll need to uh, get a new transponder for US Customs it's that little uh, thing that goes on your windshield Unfortunately, when you when you change uh, companies, you can keep the same transponder, uh, but when you change trucks, you have to get a new one. I don't know what's wrong with that one. Why is it so hard to enter the new information? But that's the way U.S. government wants it, and so now I'll have to pay 400 something U.S. dollars to get a transponder that's the annual fee for the transponder so we'll do a separate video about this all this little paperwork I have to go through uh, to get ready for the truck oh wow look there's a guy on the left no that's not a motorbike that's kind of like a one of those snow bikes oh yes snowmobile so one guy is there and he's waiting for this body who probably ran out of gas with a kid sitting on his gas tank well I'm just kidding they're probably just trying to cross but so anyway so yeah more videos are coming uh, uh, pertaining to trucking and of course once the video once the truck is here I'm gonna do all these uh, walk arounds you know you guys can ask me all kinds of questions again uh, only through Facebook and I can do a separate video with answers if you have questions about the specs why I spec something in, in that particular way you know um, so it's gonna be fun it's gonna be fun I look forward to the new truck and I still you know not 100% can believe that I will be the owner of the black Kenworth T880 with a 605 Cummins like that's the truck you know I cannot think of any other better truck uh, to do what I'm doing you know like that's it that's all I want uh, and so I'll probably keep that truck uh, longer than the Mac for sure because it's so much money you know and then the spec is perfect might as well keep it so probably that'll be my uh, my when I sell it I'll sell it when I when I'm ready to retire from trucking and uh, run for a, for the president's office in Canada. Anyway, so thanks for watching, Captain Sergey out. All the best. Uh, find me on Facebook. Send me a friend request. If you're good, we'll be friends. Take care.